you don't even need really, really heavy weight to meet your maximum strength. I know that sounds crazy, but it's not necessarily about the weight. It's about the effort. And a clever guy can use a relatively lighter weight, even just body weight, mm -hmm. and make the exercise so muscularly hard. And that doesn't hurt the joints at all. But man, do your muscles get one heck of a workout. And you're going to express whatever genetic capability you have for muscular strength, even with lighter weight. It's not, it's not the heavy weight. Only people that should really be concerned with heavy weight are either crossfitters or some type of competitive weightlifter. For normal people, you don't need to go heavy weight. I, can t I took a guy, uh, I, I did a seminar at the Cincinnati Reds uh, baseball training camp in uh, Arizona. And uh, I went there and I was working with the, the trainers, the cadre that worked with the baseball players. And there's a couple of real big, strong dudes in there. And this one guy claimed to do squats for sets and reps with over 500 pounds. That's by, that's a pretty strong dude, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I showed him how to make body weight squats really hard. Because, you know, most people could knock out a lot of body weight squats pretty effortlessly. I showed him a, a, how to change the leverage and stay out of the top portion. Mm -hmm. It's called short lever system. The dude died in five reps with his body weight. <laughs> and he was a real believer because he saw how effective it was. Mm. His muscles were working extremely hard, even though he's only using his body weight. And if you use leverage against yourself, you know, most people are trying to use leverage, you know, to lift more weight. You know, and we use leverage in our sport, you know, to get an advantage over our opponent. We're always looking for the best leverage. But in body weight exercises or exercises with lighter weight, if you can make leverage part of the resistance so that you're staying out of the easier range of motion and you're, you're working within those weaker ranges and you can take a relatively light weight or your body weight and just make it as hard as humanly possible. You can do that with push-ups, body weight squats, pull-ups, chin-ups. You don't have to go to one-legged pistol squats or anything like that. Even with just two-legged squats, I could show you a way that you would just drop onto the floor after four or five reps. And the time under load would be pretty significant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And what you about... get all the hypertrophy. You get everything. All, so, like, all, you know, because I'm thinking like the bet, the way I would do it now is to combine isometrics and super slow, because when you do super slow, you get the eccentric portion of the exercise as well, right? You get both. No, it's yeah. interesting. When you train at fairly fast speeds, your eccentric strength is about 40% greater than your, your, your uh, concentric strength. In other words, your ability to lower is much greater than your ability to lift, about 40%. But when you slow the concentric down, let's say to 10, 10, all of a sudden your negative and positive strength almost become evil. This has been shown in the laboratory, you know, experimental. So when you go slow, you no longer have that big advantage of, of getting a big rest um, when, you, when you're doing the negative. So by the time you hit your third or fourth rep, you're doing all you can do just to lower down with control. Mm, okay. At faster rates, that doesn't happen. If I lift a barbell in like one second, two seconds, I can, you know, I, I have tremendous strength in lowering. Mm -hmm. But if I take a good long 10 seconds to lift that barbell into position, and then I do a slow turnaround and start lowering it back down, all of a sudden I'm being taxed eccentrically as well. So... Okay, but what if you what if you just do focus on isometrics? So you're just you're just there, but so because the isometrics you're not moving, would you still get the benefit of the um, of the so called you know positive and eccentric like a uh, portion of? Well, you don't need it because you're still recruiting all the uh, muscle fiber. Mm, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes and sense. you see, with the isometrics, you're not getting mechanical damage when you're doing positive and negative work. You know, lifting up and down. You're getting mechanical damage, right? That, that stimulates your body to grow and get stronger. Mm -hmm. With isometrics, you're getting metabolic damage. The stimulus is metabolic. And I, I'm with you, though. I think it's good to combine metabolic with mechanical. 
So, okay, but what, what do you mean by metabolic damage? Because I I, under, I think I understand me mechanical uh, damage, right? It's your it's micro tears in your in your in your uh, muscle fibers, which have to rebuild afterwards to get. Well, ma imagine this. Uh, imagine getting in a push up position, and then you lower down halfway and just hold it. Right, you're just holding halfway. It's really hard. Okay, well, uh, say that again. Like, imagine if I'm doing a. You, you get in a push up position at the top. Right, mm -hmm. arms locked, body yeah. straight, mm -hmm. abs contracted. Excuse me. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> and you lower down halfway, so your arms are bent about ninety degrees. So your mm -hmm. chest is about that far off the floor. Yep. Right, and you hold it, and you hold it. There's no mechanical work taking place, mm -hmm. but eventually your muscles get so exhausted you drop, and you don't have an ounce of strength left in your chest arms and shoulders what happened there's no mechanical damage well maybe a little mechanical damage mm -hmm. it's metabolic metabolically your muscles were firing to the point where they can no longer hold the load and then they fail and you you sink down and sink down to the floor yeah you Everyone use up all the energy <laughs> yeah that's metabolic damage that's okay gotcha, gotcha it's like uh, the wall sit have you ever done those wall sits Back against the wall and squat down like a like a, you're, like you're sitting in an invisible chair. Yeah, yeah, in. I know what you mean. Well, I've done, I've done, I haven't, I, I know what those are. Uh, but I've done a, I, cause I, I did kung fu as a kid, as a yeah, I did horse, kung fu, horse dance. Yeah, and they oh just make God. you stay there, and it's like agonizing. That's yeah. metabolic work. Uh huh. No, no mechanical work. But that's really good for people that have joint ailments or arthritis or whatever. You're not doing me. me mechanical damage you, you know your the damage is from uh metabolic work the muscles are recruiting more and more from slow twitch and then you go to the fast twitch at the end you can't hold yourself up and boom your muscles just give out and you Metab said that you you recover do you recover faster from those times i, I those think counts? you recover a little bit faster without the mechanical damage and it's certainly good for us because our muscles are undergoing a lot of mechanical damage every time we step on the mat gripping grabbing especially fingers and grip and wrist and forearms and you know you know pretty yeah yeah, pretty. yeah exactly. it's exhausting but you'll find isometrics will you still have amazing power and strength mm -hmm. and uh you, you'll find that you'll you'll still be maybe even more explosive than you've ever been before